we all love talking about how great we are. We feel like we don't do it explicitly, but we always do. Business of Architecture, episode 343. Hello, and welcome back, Architect Nation. I'm Enoch Sears, and this is the show where you'll discover tips, strategies, and secrets for structuring your architecture practice so that you can do your best work more often. Today's guest is architect David Pollard, who started his company, Livco, in 2012 with his partner to provide quality design to suburban homeowners, but with some twist to the traditional architectural services model. Following on the heels of his graduate thesis work, where he stated that we needed to make architecture more accessible and stop trying to redesign the building systems, instead lead the charge in rethinking the design systems. This evolved into his current design build model, which allows simplified deliverables and a fully integrated and accountable team to deliver the project. Livco has won numerous awards, including 14 Chicago Remodeling Excellent Awards, four Regional Remodeling Excellent Awards, Home of the Year Award, Contractor of the Year Award, five consecutive years as House Best in Service, Remodeling Big 50 and in 2018, Dave was on the Pro Remodelers 40 Under 40 list. I'm happy to have Dave on the show today, especially because I wanted you to get and hear from uh, someone that has gone down an, perhaps a, an alternative path within architecture. On this episode, you'll discover how Dave uses simple weekly videos to expand his company's visibility and win new work. Dave, welcome to the Business of Architecture podcast. Yeah, thanks for having me, Enoch. Appreciate it. Yep, absolutely. Now, one of the reasons that caused me to reach out to you, Dave, is that you've been doing some great video marketing, and I was seeing that pretty consistently on LinkedIn. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, tell me about that. How has that been working for you? What made you get into that? How... Yeah, uh, great, great question. Um, I think the way we really got into it was... Um, was this little thing called the pandemic, um, which uh, really I think I think what happened for our company was w we kind of saw what was happening in the world that on the other side of this we're either going to be like crazy busy um, or there's potentially not going to be a whole lot of work. So I shifted all of my energy, you know, as an architect but also a business owner, to really focusing on marketing. And so we figured the phone wasn't going to be ringing a whole lot, so we would do everything that we could during that time to really just push our name out there. Um, and it was kind of a fun time because uh, I think the world was a little bit crazy in March and you could kind of do and test anything. Um, so I started doing some kind of crazy videos. Um, we did a Zoom one. Our company has 10 people and we had nine people on a Zoom at one time. So, you know, I took some screenshots and then pieced it together and made it into the, the Livco bunch, you know, like the Brady Bunch theme. So it was, it was a time where I kind of felt like we had nothing to lose where maybe we could just put stuff out there and have some fun with it. Not necessarily be on a specific marketing brand other than, or, you know, strategy, specific marketing strategy, like, Hey, this is what we're going to have to do is just kind of do it. Um, probably had a lot of time at home more than usual where, um, I had the ability with my you know new iPhone to take some cool video and, and that's really just kind of how it started. And as soon as a idea would, kind of pop into my head, I'd say, well, I'll just make it. Why not? And then we'll put it out there and see if, if anybody notices. And, and, um, I, yeah, I, I think it worked. I think we've got a lot of great feedback on it. I think it speaks to kind of our team and our brand and, and w what we're about for sure. Very cool. What, what is your content production workflow? Ooh, that's kind of a mess. Um, so one, one thing that I decided to do was keep everything on my phone. So my computer and my hard drive is so full of everything else known to man business related. And I felt like if I, if I took all this video or took, you know, 30 minutes of video and put it on my computer, it'd just be this big mess. Um, plus my computer is not really geared up for that. So, um, one of my rules was, well, I just want to have a, you know, a large enough storage on my phone and kind of use that constraint. Um, and then in order to do all the video editing, I said, I'm only going to use apps that are available on my phone because <clears throat> me, just like most designers, if I go and start using Adobe premiere or some of these really crazy, robust programs, I'll just go down a wormhole and then I'll never actually produce anything. 
So um, the workflow is essentially I try and take a lot of small video clips. I usually put them into a specific folder on my phone. I might come back to them later if I, if I have an idea where I'm going to put together a bunch of scenes from the field. I'll just kind of start sorting them. Um, and then I'll bring them into um, Adobe Rush, which is the app version on my phone, um, which is pretty powerful, but not crazy. I can only do so many tracks that so I can't get too nuts with it. Um, and then sometimes I'll also use Spark. So Spark is super simple, but very constrained, but it makes it really easy to just not go crazy and just make something simple. Um, so I kind of use those two. I've even used iMovie to just say, let's see what Apple's going to come up with for us to put something out. Sometimes I'll mix and match them, but you know, I, I try not to spend, you know, more than a couple hours really on making any content at this point. Um, and just try and keep it simple. Otherwise I'll produce one movie per year. So yeah. when you say, <laughs> when you say keep it simple, not spending much time, a couple hours, that a couple hours per week, a couple hours per day. Um, probably a couple hours per week or a couple hours per video. Uh, we don't necessarily do one every week, but, um, you know, I usually have some ideas in my queue. Like I think we need to do one that, that speaks more to our design process. So then if I go into the office, maybe I'll take some quick clips of people working at their computers or talking about design. So a lot of it's just probably thinking that, um, I'm always doing marketing. So whenever I go to the office or to a job site in a moment kind of pops, um, to capture it in one way or another. Um, we did a really cool one where, where it was the problem solving one, uh, where I went out to the job site, I put the camera up on my dashboard and I kind of talked to it, talked to the camera about, Hey, uh, the field called me with a problem. We're a builder and we're an architect. So, you know, we're in close contact. So if there's an issue that needs to be solved, they can call me or any of our design team and we'll go out and fix it. And then the carpenter, I talk it through with him and then I'm, I'm filming him while he's thinking through it and talking and none of it's scripted. He's like talking to his that. carpenter saying, oh, I think it's going to work. Yeah, we solved it. And it was, you know, and then I, I ended up sending him, sending him that clip and he just kind of laughed. He's like, I didn't even know you were filming. It's like, I'm always filming. <laughs> <laughs> I think I saw that one. I mean, that, what a great, what a great example of, of content because it's, it's, it is like a reality TV show, except it's real. Yeah. That's the one difference, right? Between it's way easier. a reality TV show and what you're producing is what you're producing is actually real. <laughs> yeah. And you know, I don't have to write a script. Um, you just kind of go out and film. I think what we do is interesting. So we just get little clips here and there for sure. Very cool. So any other apps that you use for that process? You talked about Adobe Rush. You talked about Spark. I mean, it's, I think it's fascinating that you do it all on your phone just for simplicity because that's one of the keys to getting good content out is not making it too complex and burdensome. Otherwise, it never gets done. Yeah, 100%. Um, that's really it. I'll use iMovie just so that I can do Ken Burns effects sometimes. Um, Remind me, what's a Ken Burns effect? That's when it pans across a photo. Got it. So I don't know. Rush might do it or some other apps might do it. Um, I try, I mean, if you Google what's the best app for editing photos on your phone, you'll, your head will explode. So, you know, we use creative Adobe creative suite anyway. So we already had those. Um, when I started using rush, it actually, um, didn't allow you to do slow motion, which was a pretty mm -hmm. big deal breaker because it's amazing what you can do with just a little bit of, you know, speeding it up or slowing it down. Uh, then they added that and that changed everything. Spark, you can't do that. So there's certain nuances to each little piece, and sometimes I'll mix them together, or I'll, I'll do it with Rush with music, and then bring it, in, or do it with Rush and then bring it into Spark for the end, you know, tagline and put the, the music over it. But um, yeah, again, I'm trying to keep it simple. Um, I'm yeah, a, I'm beautiful. An, I'm an architect and a business owner, not a movie producer. So uh, yeah, exactly. Well, and, and a couple hours. So let's say you spend a couple hours on one video. How long of a piece, how long would the video be? Um, I typically try and keep them under one minute. Um, sometimes if I'm telling a little bit more of a story, I'll, I'll go as, as much as three minutes. But what's really exciting about creating this content, and I don't think I, I set out to, to do this. But once you start to make all these little video clips, um, and I'd make it just to put something out on social media or put it on YouTube and, and have some fun with it. But then um, during the shutdown, you know, I was reading articles on marketing where, you know, the best money spent was in, in YouTube advertising because people were in front of YouTube constantly and you can do it really specifically targeted. 
So I had this content that I made for Instagram. I'm like, that's a great little, you know, YouTube clip. Um, and before I knew it, I get people texting me like, Hey, I just saw you guys on YouTube. Um, and, Amazing. and it kind of, it kind of worked. And then, um, if they're under a minute on Instagram, then I don't have to run it on IGTV. I can just run it on the regular feed so that when people scroll through it, um, I feel like if I'm making them more than a minute, maybe they're a little long winded. Um, and I can probably cut some stuff out to get the message across. But, um, the most exciting thing about it is I, I realize now we have all this incredible YouTube content that essentially tells our story in little pieces. Mm -hmm. And, um, what we just did is a, a MailChimp, uh, email campaign and we're not big, you know, email barragers, um, you know, like AMI is they, they're crazy, but very good. Um, but what we do is, uh, when someone signs up for a meeting with us or a video conference, we make that really easy that they can do it through the website. And we just tied in Calendly to schedule that into MailChimp. So as soon as they sign on to that, they'll get a welcome email from MailChimp that has one of those YouTube videos that I made. And I didn't make it for the purposes of that first email. I made it for the purposes of, you know, putting out a quick YouTube um, spot, ad spot on what we do and who we are. Um, and now I already have the content to put in that email. Um, and then every day after that, cause usually we schedule meetings about a week out. Um, there's four more emails and I realized that I can just embed YouTube content in that that's already made. I didn't have to make anything for it cause we'd already built out essentially our story. And it ends with the fifth email is like now for some fun stuff. And it has that Brady bunch video, um, you know, the paper house project and our coloring sheets, all the fun stuff that we generated during um, pandemic. So to kind of circle around on that, um, the really important thing that I learned is when you start building this content, it ends up not being throwaway. Like it's just incredibly powerful to have this library of content that tells your story that you can just use in so many different channels, um, which has been really cool. And what channels are you posting on right now? Um, primarily. So every day we do Instagram and we do Facebook. Um, and we try and plan those out a week in advance. Um, we used to do a lot on LinkedIn. Um, and I really like LinkedIn because I think it actually connects pretty well with our, our target market of, of, prof of uh, professionals. And also I like, you know, anything that um, kind of elevates our brand and our professionalism. Um, with that, I like LinkedIn as well because I feel like most stuff on there is people talking about great things they're doing and people not being upset about it. So it's a pretty good kind of pedestal to do that. Um, the, the reason we don't do it as frequently is really because um, we use later to do all of our scheduling for Instagram and Facebook and LinkedIn doesn't tie into it. So it's, um, it's just another step that we don't necessarily do. Um, and then we put content on YouTube um, and really that, that's pretty much it. We don't go too crazy on Pinterest or anything like that. Um, we use Howl's, um, but that's not on a daily basis. Got it. So I'm, I'm sure that some of my listeners, maybe residential architects, maybe people that work for non-residential firms, and they're thinking a couple hours a week for a one minute video. I mean, why would I do that? What actual ROI, what benefits have you seen from this push? Now, granted, you said you've only been doing it about, well, it's, it's been since March. It's been almost six months now, right? Yeah, no, I, I, I think, I think it's hard to define still at this point, the, you know, specific ROI other than our, our leads have been triple. Um, you know, I think now when you say leads have been triple due to what, why is that? Do you think I, I definitely, Any idea? yeah, no, it's definitely because of specific marketing and targeted marketing and getting our name out there. Um, Got it. yeah, I, I think, and, and I run a little side marketing group, um, that we do monthly calls amongst a couple other architects and a couple other builders as well. And what I kind of hear, I think architects are, are kind of feel like marketing in some ways is or at least smaller architects is, is a little bit of a bad word. Um, like sales where it becomes like, you know, well, I don't, I don't want to go around talking about how great I am, which is kind of silly because we all love talking about how great we are. We just don't like to, we feel like we don't do it explicitly, but we always do. Um, so once, once I kind of got over that barrier of, you know what, we're really great. And we, I think we do something really cool that a lot of people might not, might be excited about and want to use us. Um, once you get past that and you're excited about talking about it, it makes it a lot easier. Um, if that, if that helps explain that, that side of the story. 
Yeah, awesome. And it, it sounds like it's been working really well for you. I mean, tripling your leads, that's that's an amazing statistic right there. What else have you done to market other than the video marketing that you're doing? Anything else? Um, no, we don't, we don't really do, um, it's pretty much focused digitally. Um, we did produce our guidebook, which I think has been really, really valuable. Um, and you can see that on our, on our website. So you have your guidebook, walk us through this. Yeah. So, so we made our guidebook, which we actually started at, at the, at the beginning of the year and we got a box of, of about a hundred of these, like at the beginning of March when everything was shut down. So it's kind of a bummer because it had these beautiful new magazine quality um, brochures, you know, but brochure is kind of a lame word. So uh, we call it our guidebook, which really is a leave behind that walks, walks clients uh, through our process. Um, we couldn't have any meetings at the time because everything was shut down. So I had a whole box of them. So we created a digital version so that people could pan through it on our website. I also created a video um, that we put out on our social channels of, you know, flipping through it and, um, you know, in a fast forwarded motion. So it turned out really cool that we got a little bit of, um, buzz around it. And then we said, Hey, if you want one, just let us know and we'll drop one in your mailbox. Um, so we got some, some good energy with that. Um, we still do that. If, if people want us to mail one to them or drop it off, we're happy to do that. For the most part, it's, it's our leave behind, um, that lets people after our meeting kind of go through and learn a little bit more about us. Um, we put a lot of project content in it, um, photos, uh, testimonials from clients. Uh, and then we put our three-step process in it. We love showing photos with our clients in it and our happy families. Um, kind of the love where you live aspect. We talked about our team. Um, we have some fun activities. So here on the first page, there's a, you know, I don't know how well you guys can see that, but you know, it's our game time. You know, you connect nice. the, connect the dots between the before and afters. And then we have a, a workbook in the back as well, which allows people to, um, kind of do a questionnaire to dig into their minds a little bit more. We have a worksheet for timing. Um, so we try and make it, you know, a guidebook to talk about us, walk through our process, but also uh, help them a little bit. Um, just give a little bit more to it. So that's something that we did. That's probably our only print uh, that we've done. We haven't done any mailers or anything of that nature. Um, been doing some podcasts, which is something, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, here we are. Here we are. So that's that's working pretty well for you. Well, what's next in the marketing front? Or do you think you're going to maintain this and it's working pretty well? Why rock the boat? Um, so that's a great question. Um, I think I want to keep keep doing what we're doing digitally. Uh, my big effort before the end of the year is to tighten it up. So what happened in March, um, I just kind of went on a rampage and just started doing all this stuff, right? So now it's all fragmented and it's all over the place. Uh, even if you go to our website, I'm not a web designer. Uh, we had a professional build it, but when the shutdown happened, I added a bunch of buttons and links and a bunch of things to it so that people could access different content, um, but it wasn't really designed, so that needs to be tightened up. Um, I think the other big thing is, now that we do have all this great content that I'm really excited about, again, kind of keeping it living and tying it into the rest of our digital presence so that the really cool before and after videos that we make and put on our Instagram channel, uh, I want people to be able to see those on our website, right? Start to bring all that content in and just round, round everything out is really my next goal. Um, and then once I get that, maybe we'll figure out something else crazy to do. Amazing. And what do you find clients are saying about the, the, either the videos or the content or the guidebook getting any feedback? Uh, probably the number one thing that I hear from prospects and clients is I absolutely love your Instagram feed. Yeah. I get that probably most often. Um, then we get a, a lot of good feedback from, um, the fun, the fun YouTube videos that people see, or, uh, people will see it pop up while their kids are watching YouTube and they're kind of excited about it. So where can people go to find your, follow your Instagram channel? Um, so we are live companies is our, is our company name L I V C O M P A N I E S. Um, so our Instagram handle is live L I V underscore companies. Great. Well, that's a great place to sign off today. Dave, 
thanks for being on the show and talking to us about the wonderful content marketing you're doing in the video marketing. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. And that's a wrap. If you enjoyed today's show, please head on over to iTunes and leave us a review. I read every single one. Also, I'd love to get your feedback on this particular episode or the show in general, as well as your recommendations. You can reach us by emailing podcast at businessofarchitecture.com. This podcast is brought to you by Business of Architecture, a leading architect business consultancy. Access our free training on how to structure your architecture firm for more freedom, fulfillment, and financial success by going to smartpracticemethod.com. The views expressed on this show by my guests do not represent those of the host, and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, warranty, pledge, contract, bond, or commitment, except to help you conquer the world. Carpe diem.